you, Grenada, and the rest of the world. Thank you very much for joining us on uh, this, the, let's see here, 28th day of uh, October 2018. Month is almost gone, just about shot. Well, I'll tell you, it's a beautiful morning outside, just out there a few minutes ago on the balcony, and loads and loads of sunshine. Looks like we're in for a pretty good uh, Sunday. Certainly hope you do enjoy it, and uh, that the time that you spend here with us this morning will be very informative. We got a heck of a lot going on, and I mean a heck of a lot. So let's get down to brass tacks. We'll start with a buzz and uh, just uh, a rundown what's coming your way over the next three hours. In the buzz, you'll hear a reading from the Holy Scriptures. And uh, yeah, we do have some feedback this morning. As far as editorials are concerned, I do have, let's see, one, two, three of them for you. The Grenada Advocate is captioned, Hurricanes are not the only threat. The new today is captioned, Embarrassing Episode. And the Grenadian Voice is captioned, Events of October 19th were part of the revolution. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I told you it's going to be an interesting morning. Then we get down to our interviews. The uh, one, only one interview per se this morning, and it's captioned, the Rotary celebrates an anniversary and preps for Carols by Candlelight. Might remember last uh, Sunday we were hoping to have with us uh, the president or past president of the Rotary Club of Grenada, uh, Terrence Smith. He wasn't able to make it. Uh, something popped up. And uh, as a result, he's coming in here this morning, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, I hope. So we'll hear what uh, Terrence has to say about how Rotary is celebrating its uh, big, big, big anniversary and an event which people look forward to, just about everybody looks forward to uh, at this time of the year, Carols by Candlelight, okay? Now, our main feature this morning, you're going to hear a number of voices, four and against Grenada's accession to the CCJ's appellate jurisdiction. Let me tell you who these folks are. There's a young lady who uh, recently won an essay competition on the referendum that was put on by the uh, Willie Reddit Foundation. Never met this lady before, as far as I know, but... Um, I, I read this thing, and I thought, oh, my gosh, if only I could get her to appear on this program. And guess what? I did. I did. With the help of Mr. Norris Mitchell. Her name is Karina Blosh. Like I said, she's the winner of that essay competition on the referendum. She's going to be joining us here in person a little later on this morning. Also joining us, somebody I can't say, maybe, maybe in my days in Canada, years and years, we're talking over 30 years ago, maybe I ran into him, but I don't, I uh, don't remember. He is actually a Grenadian, but a judge, a, f uh, a retired judge in Canada now. He's been practicing in Canada for many years, now retired, and uh, probably living a life of leisure which I want to do when I grow up. His name is Mr. Romain Pitt. He's going to be joining us this morning by telephone. Okay. These two uh, folks are going to be joined. Um, Mr. Pitt, by the way, is going to be in Canada, like I said, but sitting right here this morning, Norris Mitchell, who is a retired architect. I invited Norris to be on the program this morning because in the past couple of weeks, he's written some very interesting articles, um, which we've published on the GrenadaBroadcast.com website, about the referendum. Okay? And uh, I thought, hmm, interesting stuff. We're hearing different perspectives. Let's bring him in. Another gentleman who's been writing quite a bit of stuff lately, um, 
Mr. William Joseph. He's a political analyst. At least that's the way I've got him described here on the website. And uh, Willie has been uh, writing a lot of stuff over the past uh, year or so. And he is going to be uh, sitting here as well. So that's it, folks. That's what we got cooking here this morning. Now, having said that, as I mentioned to you, we're going to try and rush through things this morning because there's an awful lot going on. So, on that note, let's take our very first little break here. Ding! And we'll come on back. Pure Grenada, the Isle of Spice, is more than a slogan. Grenada boasts some of the world's best spices like nutmeg, mace, clove, ginger, turmeric, and a true cinnamon. These clean and naturally safe pesticide-free spices that were once available only in local markets are now one mouse click away at grenadamarket.com. Our spices are responsibly harvested in small batches to preserve freshness, unlike some bulk spices that sit around in silos all year round. Log on! to www.grenadamarket.com and shop for Grenada's best spices. Grenadamarket.com. When you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. Grenadian General Insurance Company. Strength and stability. Grenadian General Insurance Company. Tell your friends and your family. We cover household as comprehensive. Motor and even fire too Contractors all risk burglary Public liability Professional indemnity Directors liability And wait, we still have more Come and find out more What you're waiting for We are located on Scott Street, St. George's For more information Call 440-2434 Tell everybody for convenience, bill payments can be made at Bill Express at Western Union. Many of these are open until 6 p.m., including Saturdays. A 24-hour check drop box is also available at Grand Lex Customer Care Centers at Grand Dance and Bruce Street. I'm always on the move. Training. Traveling. Competing. So it's good to know I have Quad Bank in the palm of my hand. Introducing eBanking, one of many customer convenience services from Grenada Corporate Bank. And there's more to come. It's swift, simple, and secure. Welcome home. And so we go right along, folks. 100 miles an hour this morning. We're scooting along. Let me say a quick hello to the folks on the shout box. Jackie, hello, Jackie. She's saying good morning to everybody. Uh, Dennis is saying good morning, uh, George and class. After last weekend's rain, it's a lovely sunny morning here in Kariakou. Christine and Dennis, well, guys, it's a sunnier morning here in Grenada. You put that in your pipe and smoke it. Thanks a lot for joining us, as always. Who else is out in the uh, box already this morning? Anthea Rello says, Good morning, George, and all greetings from Decatur. Another catch-up day. Um, she's got to leave for work in one hour. Oh, well, at least you spent a few minutes with us, uh, Anthea. Always nice to see you. I hope your brother is doing just fine. Kipling says, uh, Good morning, and sends God's blessings to all. And uh, then he goes on to say, an apology can never change the damages that are done by a despicable statement or action. Yes, it takes a man to apologize, but it also takes a cunning, shameless man to say or do something that he wants to in order to glorify himself and then mockingly apologize, so says Kipling. Then, uh, who else is out there this morning? Uh, on uh, on Facebook, let's see here. On Facebook, Grenada Sunshine, a appropriate name for this morning. She's saying good morning, Georgia listeners and viewers. Blessed Sunday to all. 
Oswin Lewis is saying good morning, everyone. Watching from St. Vincent. Hello, Vincy. Nice to have you with us. Beautiful day. Might want to go over to the uh, Tobago Keys. Do a little swimming and snorkeling. Kath or Kathleen Thomas says good morning from Toronto. Hope you guys are having a nice sunny day up there as well. And Winifred Williams is saying good morning from Washington, D.C. Gaston Williams. Sunday blessings to everyone. There you have it, folks. There you have it. Now, just before I get into uh, this morning's edition of The Buzz, I want to say something because I'm, I'm really, really pumped up about this. Even though, you know, there's an old saying, the proof is in the pudding. We'll wait and see what happens. But I'm happy to sit here this morning and report to you, report to you that I have been promised. You know the issues we've been having with uh, the buffering so far this morning? Look, everything's going hunky-dory. It's just really beautiful out there on uh, Facebook this morning. The stream's going right up to Facebook this morning. But I have been promised by a certain provider that as of Wednesday, of this coming week, those issues will be resolved. You know the <laughs> and you see things sometimes an hour after I say or do them here in the studio. Yeah, we've been promised that by uh, Wednesday that issue will be resolved. And I say thank you, Lord. Thank you even before it has been delivered because I really do believe. I've been promised faithfully they're going to solve the problem. Yep. I'm taking their word for it. Taking their word. And um, when you watch this week's editions of uh, Good Day Grenada, I hope you'll begin to notice a difference. And then I'll be the first to go, Yaman! Yeah, you know, congratulating them and thanking them so much. I really appreciate that. Now, so this morning, beautiful green light here. Everything's hunky dory the way it should be. Let's keep our pinkies crossed. Now, let us get into today's edition of the buzz. As we always do, we begin with a reading from the Holy Scriptures. And this morning, folks, we will begin with Psalm 27, verses, uh, starting at verse 1, actually. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me, to devour me. It is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, my heart will not fear. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. That's a passage from the 27th Psalm. Check it out. Okay? Now, ah ha ha, Georgie spoke too soon. Georgie spoke too soon. Uh, Taking a look here, I see that uh, our internet woes have returned. <laughs> uh, yeah, 
let's get into the buzz and we'll start with the feedback. Somebody by the name of, uh, who goes by the name of VT. VT sent me this and uh, I want to share this with you. She says, I just need to vent today. Please permit me. Thanks for posting the ruling regarding Hewitt Lane Privy Council Reserves judgment. I don't think it was a ruling. I thought it was just uh, some information about the case that's going on in, uh, in England. Anyhow, she says, I'm not focusing on the case, but on the time it took to move the case through the system. The proponents of the CCJ tell us that access to justice would be faster than that of the Privy Council. I don't know when Hewitt Lane's case was first filed, but the judgment in the High Court was made in 2013. The matter was then appealed and was heard two years later in the Court of Appeal in 2015. Lane took his matter to the Privy Council, and now, three years later, in 2018, the matter is being heard. My point. Should we believe that getting to the CCJ as our final Court of Appeal would be any faster than getting to the Privy Council? It has taken the Gilbert family two years just to have their case filed, not heard, in the CCJ's original jurisdiction. And whatever the judgment, this is the original and final court for their case. There can be no further appeal. From the photo recently circulated in social media, Proponents of the yes vote for the CCJ actually accompanied Lane to the Privy Council as part of his legal team, while we are being told that we must vote yes in the upcoming referendum to leave the same Privy Council and move to the CCJ's final jurisdiction to break the chains of colonialism. What hypocrisy! I do not know the total cost to Lane for appealing his case to the Privy Council, bearing in mind that he, Lane, might have done most of the work himself. But judging from the size of that team, Travel and accommodation would definitely increase the cost. My point? The ordinary people of Grenada could barely afford even one lawyer to the local court. How then would they be able to afford such a team? Even with Lane being a lawyer, to appear before the CCJ, which is located in Trinidad? I'm still not convinced that the CCJ would be better for us than the Privy Council. So I would be voting no again and ask all eligible voters to go out on referendum day and do likewise. Vote no. Many thanks, Val, who describes herself as a silent protester and activist. Now, that's the first piece I have for you in, uh, in the feedback section. It's 20 minutes after the hour. I have another one. This comes from Little Angel. She sent this note to me last night. It's captioned, Little, excuse me, Yellow Ashes. 
And that refers to a piece which I published from uh, Willie Joseph on the uh, GrenadaBroadcast.com website, the site that you're on right now. Um, and I quote, GrenadaBroadcast.com is one of the few media platforms in Grenada that practices an open-door policy which affords anyone the opportunity to share information. This is commendable, especially in a world where there is a tendency to exclude rather than include others. Inclusion is a universal human right, and within the media world, it allows for a variety of opinions which should be respected. Inclusion can also give rise to differences in opinions and encourages tolerance. By disseminating information through broadcasting, others can learn. It is in this context that the following comment is being made. Writing and speaking are well-established forms of communication, and whenever they occur, they should be of some benefit to the reader and listener. It is hard to conclude that there was any benefit to be derived from listening or reading the recent opinion piece entitled Yellow Ashes, aired on Good Day Grenada on October 24th, 2018. The opinion lacked clarity and coherence and left one to wonder what was the intended message. A number of inaccurate and misleading statements were made the Goliath, Samson, and Delilah and, uh, and analogies were confusing, and the wilderness experience was bewildering. Reading Yellow Ashes exhausted the mind and will do nothing to assist Grenadians who are yearning for truth, fairness, and democratic reform. It is unfair to accuse any political party of being a unpatriotic without presenting information to support the statement. A political party cannot give a one-party state as a gift to another. This is inaccurate. Anyone who is knowledgeable in personality traits and understands the history of other nations that have been ruled and continue to be ruled single-handedly by an individual or party will not make such an accusation. To refer to, quote, the 2018 electoral demolition of one particular political party in Grenada is to ignore all other parties independent candidates, and the many factors that were evident prior to and during the March 2018 general elections, which contributed to the further demise of democracy. Sharing pertinent information with the Grenadian people is more acceptable. Communication within the various media circles in Grenada is much to be desired. People are skeptical about talking and sharing information is sometimes censored. Yellow ashes could have been a product of such skepticism and censorship and demonstrating demonstrated writing that seemed to be fulfilling an agenda other than communicating a meaningful message to an audience. Grenadians need clarity and truth, and the media, including any written communication, should provide them. Signed, Little Angel. And so, my dear friends, that's going to take care of this morning. Thank you very much, Little Angel. That's going to take care of this morning's edition 
of the buzz. And uh, glancing back here, first of all, let's take a look here at the shout box. And the shout box, uh, nothing there on uh, on uh, Facebook. I see here, uh, Fitzroy Adams says, "Good morning. I'm watching from New York. Well, hello there, New York." And Ann Mapson says, "Pleasant good morning." Taking it in from Brooklyn, New York. Okay, there you go. All righty, folks. Tell you what, let's take another little break here, and we'll come on back and get started with our editorials. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates. 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com. When you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. Can I have a chicken lunch, please? Large. Real nice today. Mm-mm. I don't want that. But you just asked for a chicken lunch. I don't have problem with the lunch. I freed the container. Why is the problem with it? These styrofoam containers, they do good for the environment. They shorten me life. What foolishness are you telling me? So what do you want me to use? Put my food in this. Where you get that? At the food fair, where you could get all biodegradable food boxes and disposable food supplies like cups, plates, anything you could think about. Name it, it's there. And they don't harm the environment. Food fear, taking the lead in cleaning up and protecting the environment. Hey, hey. Like you take me advice, you get in your biodegradable food supplies. Hey girl, I supporting who's supporting the environment. That is why I shop in that food fair. Food fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Products distributed by Hubbard's agency, Kirani James Boulevard. Grenbeck Community Partnership Initiative. We are the Dorothy Hopkins Center can always rely on you for your steadfast help. It's always forthcoming. We have seen the benefits already. Our bill has been reduced our store by over 40% and that is welcome because that translates to more care for the residents. And so, thanks again. Grenbeck, energizing our community. I'm always on the move. Training. Traveling, competing. So it's good to know I have Quad Bank in the palm of my hand. Introducing eBanking, one of many customer convenience services from Grenada Corporate Bank. And there's more to come. It's swift, simple, and secure. Welcome home. All righty, folks. It's now, let's see, 29 minutes after. Woo. 29 minutes after the hour, we got to scurry along here. Let's go directly to the editorials from, let's start with the Grenada Advocate, which is captioned, Hurricanes are not the only threat. Okay? As we are all aware, hurricanes are not the only natural disaster that could affect us. And as was pointed out recently, by a top official at the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency. What is needed here in the region is a comprehensive disaster risk management strategy to manage all potential threats. It was suggested by that top official that the region perhaps could learn from their Japanese and Cuban colleagues who have adopted a culture of resilience, or what is referred to as a culture of managing risks, whereby they first acknowledge what the risks are and thereby 
prepare to advance in advance to deal with them. Within the whole disaster management framework, it has been acknowledged that we must be better prepared for severe weather systems such as storms and hurricanes. But within that context, great focus must also be placed on bracing for other threats, including geological hazards and geoseismic events, public health emergencies, tsunamis, and even something as basic as extensive periods of rainfall that can lead to flooding and therefore present additional problems. As such, the focus shifts from one solely of disaster management to disaster risk management. Speaking of managing risks, it has meanwhile been acknowledged that the private sector can play a bigger role in the area of disaster risk reduction. Barbados Minister of Home Affairs Edmund Hankson suggested this recently as he spoke at a seminar focusing on hurricane preparedness and building resilience, which took place at UN House. He stressed that there is a greater role to be played by the private sector and business community in the quest to become disaster resilient. At the time, he rightly noted that disaster risk reduction is a shared responsibility and cannot only be a governmental one. And as such, he stated his intention to encourage a more active exploration and implementation of public-private partnerships in disaster risk management, which can have significant benefits for the communities in which private businesses are located. This is indeed commendable. The minister said at the time that before a disaster, the private sector has a key role to play in promoting risk reduction activities. We can easily point to the strong support that many private sector entities have provided, but we do not consider sponsorship to be all that defines the role of the private sector in disaster risk management. Quote, the private sector can be a driving force in promoting resilience through mitigation of risks by facilitating an environment that enables and empowers citizens to opt for risk reduction actions. The private sector can lead by introducing to our local markets innovative products and services through which the average citizen can improve the resilience of their property and livelihoods. We must also acknowledge the support of private entities towards enhancing our preparedness for crises and disasters." Unquote. He meanwhile lauded the manner in which private businesses stepped up to the plate to assist with the response efforts following disasters which befell neighboring islands recently. So, we can see that attention is now being paid to this whole concept of disaster risk management and given that disasters can take varying forms, it is time we adopt a more comprehensive strategy for dealing with all potential hazards, not just hurricanes. That, pilgrims, is your editorial, which appeared in this past week's edition of The Grenada Advocate. Now, Georgie Porgy is going to take a little break here, and then we'll come on back and hear what the Grenadian voice had to say. Helen. Hey, neighbor. 
Here's the bill I asked you to pay for me. How did you get your electricity bill to be so low? For one, we size our transformers just for what we need. And we unplug transformers, chargers and other devices when they're not in use. We also replaced our light bulbs with LEDs. They burn less energy, right? Much less. I even replaced the seal on my refrigerator door to keep the cold air in. And Grenlec is always advising us not to open the fridge too often. That's right. And my family washes and irons in bulk. With fuel prices changing all the time, how do you know if it is working? We pay attention to the usage history table. Over time, our average usage has decreased. So while Grenada can't control fuel prices, I can conserve energy and save money. Grenelec, energizing our Grenada. We have a date of history. The issue for the 6th of November is to vote on a bill. Could you enlighten the audience as to your motives for moving away from the JCPC? It is necessary to give citizens of Grenada the, uh, the right to appeal the outcome of general elections to the High Court, the Court of Appeals, and to the Caribbean Court of Justice. Do we give funds to the Privy Council? In Dominica, do you swear allegiance to the Queen? The advisory committee really needs to take its role serious. Whatever we have to give to our polit political opponents, we will give. Vote yes, vote no. It's referenda on the CCJ in Grenada and Antigua. Join the discussion on Sunday, October 28th on Time to Face the Facts with host Jerry George, live at 8 p.m. on Caribvision and the Time to Face the Facts show Facebook page. to you Jean Pascal out there on Facebook this morning thank you very much for joining us the editorial which appeared in this past week's edition of the Grenadian Voice is captioned events of October 19th were part of the revolution as time goes by and more information on the revolution is revealed people are better able to put into context the events at the then Fort Rupert, now called Fort George, that even today people are still shedding tears over. The People's Revolution, which began on March 13, 1979, was an illegal takeover of the democratically elected GULP government. In the end, it saw a government that lasted only a few days, 
as the Revolutionary Military Council, or RMC, ended on October 25th, 1983. The revolutionary leaders suspended the Constitution and introduced a different kind of governance which changed the accepted norms of life in Grenada. According to the late Teddy Victor, the new system was based on the Bolshevik style of governance that existed in the Soviet Union at the time. While some may say that it was a socialist system, the USA said that it was a communist system that was then introduced to Grenada, and although arguably so, that school of thought was bought by many. Communism embraces Marxism and anarchism, as well as strange political ideologies. There are those who believe that the GULP government was removed by anarchy, which some paid for with their lives. Under colonial rule, Grenada was a class society. In simple terms, the upper and lower class. The GULP began to change the class system with such programs as Land for the Landless and other policies. The revolution continued by giving the lower class more power. This must have created uneasiness in social circles. Research shows that a communist society is structured on common ownership of the means of production and the absence of social classes. So some reforms were described as necessary, though not welcomed by all. However, Maurice Bishop came to Grenada from Aruba as part of the upper class. So it is no wonder that he was able to be used as a link between the classes for the revolution. Critics of the newly introduced system were treated as enemies of the state or counters and sadly some were jailed including the owner of this newspaper. This quickly sent the message that if you can't fight them, you must join them. So, the masses settled down and seemingly accepted the new system. The Russian slogan, Peace, Bread and Land, was the popular intonation that occupied the minds of people. Yet, there was a constant fear that enemies would invade and try to turn back the revolution. As a result, Grenadians were trained with live ammunition to face any invasion by the United States of America, which had its eyes on Grenada's foreign policy. Young Grenadians were sent to Russia, Cuba, Libya, and other countries of similar governing systems because the new system required schooling and studies in order to understand how it worked in other countries. According to reports, members of groups that were intimate with the People's Revolutionary Government spent long hours reading books and other materials on the communist and socialist system. In fact, one of the complaints which made Maurice Bishop unpopular among his people was that he was not spending enough time in studies. It is true that the revolution had some successful state-led projects which included agro-industries, the Sandino construction plant, the state-owned sugar company, and the coffee processing plant. Grencraft 
the marketing branch of the Grenada National Institute of Handicraft, was instrumental in creating cottage industries and exported goods to other territories. Road building, state sector construction of low-income housing, medical and educational facilities, and construction of the International Airport stimulated employment and growth in the economy. The PRG's overall approach won the support of most Grenadians, and it is said that it even drew praise from the World Bank in 1982. Those days are still being described by some as glorious days. Catholic Bishop Clyde Harvey said it was a time when young people dared to dream big. It was the time of forward ever, backward never. Now, 35 years later, members of the People's Revolutionary Army, or PRA, are speaking out on the serious buildup of military arms and training that took place as part of the new system. Real wars were simulated with live ammunition in the name of maneuvers that ended with a rally where the Prime Minister would remind the masses that Grenada is prepared to bury America in the sea should that country attempt to invade the Spice Isle. The mood of those days was to be on guard and alert. Maurice Bishop was however warned by some that the enemy may not come from outside. In 1982, the now deceased President Samora Mikhail of Mozambique visited Grenada to show his support for the revolution. He was one of the people who warned the PRG against becoming complacent. In fact, it is documented that he warned Bishop that the enemy may be under his footstool. There was also a popular calypso with a line, quote, the same people that put you up will be the same people that will pull you down, unquote. The song was called Stand Up Grenada by the mighty short shirt. As Minister of National Security, Bishop must have known the reactions that certain actions would bring during the revolution. It would be remiss of us not to believe that what happened on October 19, 1983 came as a surprise to him. It should be seen as a part of the glorious revolution which ended the reign of the PRG and began the brief period in power of the Revolutionary Military Council, or RMC, which was headed by the military chief, Hudson Austin. The RMC ruled by decree for almost six dreadful days during the revolution as it placed the nation under a shoot-to-kill curfew while the, uh, while the Constitution remained suspended. We share the thought by James Ferguson in his book, Grenada Revolution in Reverse, that the American-led rescue mission on October 25th was not interested in rescuing the revolution from the RMC. It was a way of rolling back what was seen as a communist system in Grenada. 
Pilgrims, that's the editorial which appeared in this past week's edition of The Grenadian Voice. And now, one more to go. Two down, one to go. We'll take a break and we'll come on back with the new today. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try their sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates, 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com. When you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. For convenience, bill payments can be made at Bill Express at Western Union. Many of these are open until 6 p.m., including Saturdays. A 24-hour check drop box is also available at Grand Lex Customer Care Centers at Grand Dance and Bruce Street. So, babe, mm -hmm. Alberto and Beryl come and gone, right? So that means we still have Chris, Debbie, Florence, Michael, Patty, Sarah. From the looks of it, Tony and Valerie might be coming as well. So we need to pick up some extra hurricane supplies. You don't know how many hurricanes will be coming this season. So you need to be prepared. At Hubbard's Hardware and Building Supply Department and the Food Fair Supermarkets, everything from canned foods, flashlights and batteries, to plywood, tarpaulin, lanterns, Roof repair kits, water tanks, etc. are available. For over 90 years, we've helped you prepare for and recover from storms. Hubbard's is an integral part of your hurricane preparedness plan. Get discounts when using credit and debit cards. Grenlec Community Partnership Initiative. We're here in sincere appreciation to Grenlec as a utility corporation for the donation of that rooftop solar generating plant. It would reduce our monthly bill on behalf of the Hillsview Home residents and the wider community here at Gove to just thank Grenlec most sincerely for that thoughtful donation. Grenlec, energizing our community. Okie dokie folks, seven minutes away from the hour, our first guest has arrived and we'll get to him in just a wee bit. Also want to take a moment here to say hello, Margaret, Margaret, uh, Red Ed Fletcher is joining us on Facebook, good to see you. Folks, the editorial which appeared in this past week's edition of The New Today is captioned, Embarrassing Episode. It's a very embarrassing moment for newly installed Acting Commissioner of Police, Edvin Martin, and the rest of the High Command, following reports that a Superintendent of Police is being investigated for a sexual transgression against a 16-year-old. It must be a disconcerting time for the Royal Grenada Police Force since the victim of the Sexual Assault Act got entangled with them and unfortunately fell under their care due to neglect by a state body. The victim is known to be a teenager who was the main witness for the state in a murder that took place in the south of the island back in 2017. The research done so far by the New Today seems to suggest that the teenager had no right to be under the care of the police force, but rather the Child Protection Authority of the Ministry of Social Affairs of Minister Delman, Delma Thomas. The ruling New National Party government of Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell, under Minister Thomas and CPA failed this child by not putting anything in place to look after her and leaving it up to the unprepared police to try and do something in the unfortunate circumstances. The information obtained by this newspaper 
is that the parents of the child did not want her to remain in her surroundings. Given the existing atmosphere following the murder, arrest, and murder charge slapped on an individual within the neighborhood. It is also our understanding that no family member was willing to take the child into their care and she was initially put at a home in St. Mark and literally abandoned thereafter by the Child Protection Agency. The child was seemingly troubled and needed to be put into a special home that caters for her specific needs. This never happened and she became a frequent runaway from the place in St. Mark. It is our understanding that the police unfortunately got involved in the matter to do what really should have been done for the 16-year-old by the CPA. The child ended up at Central Police Station on the Carinage and onto St. Paul's Police Station and finally at the Special Services Unit Camp at Point Celine. This is not a child who was put into any protection program by the court, but someone who was considered as a key witness for the state in a murder trial, which will soon come up for hearing before a high court judge and jury. However, the alleged sexual assault of the teenager while under the care of the police will have to be viewed against the backdrop of the recent launch of the much publicized Sexual Victims Unit by Acting Commissioner Martin in the presence of Prime Minister and Minister of National Security Dr. Keith Mitchell. The top cop made heavy weather of the amount of underage young girls in the country who were being preyed upon by much older men in society and the need to stamp it out. Commissioner Martin would not have been put, excuse me, Commissioner Martin could never have envisioned that a month later that one of his own would be put under the microscope for alleged sexual interference with a 16-year-old. The new today cannot make any definitive statement on the issue at this stage since the matter is still under investigation and the outcome would be left totally to the discretion of the Director of Public Prosecutions Christopher Nelson. The fact is that fingers are pointing at a senior police officer who was put in a position of trust which was apparently breached and he is now suspected of badly letting down his superiors at Fort George. This newspaper is forced to ask many questions of the police high command in light of this embarrassing episode. The questions are very important because many of them bring into sharp focus the kinds of structures put in place by the RGPF to accommodate this teenager that they took under their care to offer some form of protection. Why would anyone in their good head and senses take a decision to put a 16-year-old female at the SSU camp, which is known to be occupied mainly by males? This is nothing but madness. Is there a system in place to ensure 24-hour protection for a young girl at the SSU? 
Was there a female officer assigned to her within the camp? If so, where was that particular individual on the night in question when the alleged sex act took place? Who was the officer responsible for the overall security of this young female witness? Government would have to review the operations of the CPA since too many complaints are coming into the public domain about its failings and not living up to its expectations. Grenada is apparently signing on to a number of international protocols and accepting money for the protection of children but not putting in place the required systems to fulfill our obligations at the international level. If there are square pegs in round holes at the agency, then the time has come for the situation to be seriously addressed so that the taxpaying people of Grenada, Kariakou, and Petty Martinique can get value for money from those hired at the CPA. If Minister Thomas cannot handle the risk at hand, then Prime Minister Mitchell needs to intervene and step in to ensure that the CPA does what it ought to be doing to protect our vulnerable young people. Okie dokie, pilgrims. That's going to do it for our editorials this week. You had three, the Grenadian Advocate, the Grenadian Voice, and the New Today. And having said that, Georgie Porgy is now going to take another little break, and then we'll come back with our guests. But first, hold on a sec, hold on a sec. Let me pay a quick visit here to uh, uh, Facebook. Elton Sylvester says, Good day to you, Mr. Grant, your guest, and all the worldwide audience, like myself, from a lovely and beautiful wet fall Sunday in Toronto. Hello, Elton. Thanks for your program of enlightenment of the present situation and future direction of our beloved country, Grenada. No matter the off and on stoppage. Yeah, the off and on stoppage. Guys, uh, Elton, just in case you missed what I said earlier on this morning, I see it's happening here right now. I can tell you guys out there on Facebook are having a oh, 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 up and down ride. Well, I've been promised, I told you this morning, that by Wednesday of this week, this issue with the Internet should be resolved. Join me in keeping your pinkies crossed, okay? So, break time, and then we'll come on back. Uh, take a look at this. See this character sitting down there with the blue shirt and uh, the rotary logo? Yeah, yeah, that's 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 the first guy we're going to be talking to this morning. But right now, let's take a little break, and we'll come on back. Can I have a chicken lunch, please? Large. Real nice today. Mm -mm. I don't want that. Will you just ask for a chicken lunch? I don't have problem with the lunch. I the container. Why is the problem with it? These styrofoam containers, they do good for the environment. They shorten your life. What, what foolishness are you telling me? So what do you want me to use? Put my food in this. Where you get that? At the food fair, where you could get all biodegradable food boxes and disposable food supplies like cups, plates, Anything you could think about, name it, it's there. And they don't harm the environment. Food Fear, taking the lead in cleaning up and protecting the environment. Hey, hey. like you take me advice, you get in your biodegradable food supplies. Hey girl, I supporting who's supporting the environment. That is why I shop in that Food Fear. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Products. Distributed by Hubbard's agency, Kirani James Bolivar. 
Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates, 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com. When you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. Grenneck Community Partnership Initiative. We at the Dorothy Hopkins Center can always rely on you for your steadfast help. It's always forthcoming. We have seen the benefits already. Our bill has been reduced, I was told, by over 40%. And that is welcome because that translates to more care for the residents. And so, thanks again. Grenbeck, energizing our community. I'm always on the move. Training, traveling, competing. So it's good to know I have Quap Bank in the palm of my hand. Introducing eBanking, one of many customer convenience services from Grenada Corporate Bank. And there's more to come. It's swift, simple, and secure. Alrighty folks, let me say good morning now to somebody out there in Zurich, Switzerland, and that's Nesta. Hello, Nesta Aberdeen. Good to see you, girl. She's saying good morning to everybody and wishing you a happy and blessed Sunday. Okay, so says Nesta. Now we go back here to the shout box. I see that Jackie has also joined us. Good morning, Jackie. I'm hungry, girl. Haven't had any brekkie yet this morning. I'm hungry. You got bakes? Swordfish, herring. If you do have, bring some over. We will rise. Uh, saying good morning, George and all. Happy Sunday to all. Happy Sunday to you too. We will rise. Tessa, I'm not sure whether she's in Trinidad or where she is right now, but there goes a uh, good old telephone ringing. And uh, ha 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 ha. That person is certainly going to have to wait. Tessa is saying good morning all and wishing everyone a lovely day. And Chester, also out there in Switzerland. Let's see. Chester saying good morning uh, all. Greetings from Zurich, Switzerland. Almost missed the program. Our time went back one hour. Ah. Already? Already? Okay. Anyhow, folks, take a look. And let's say good morning to Mr. Terrence Smith. Terrence, how are you, my good friend? Long time no see. Yes, I'm fine, George. The last time I saw you, you were here to talk about Carol's by Candlelight. Yeah, myself and um, past president Richard Duncan. Right, so two past presidents. Yeah. Come on, guys. Is that the only time you guys are going to come talk to me here about Carol's uh, by Candlelight? Well, George, from time to time, I'm involved in... Um, in activities, I am actually maybe embarking on an activity in the next couple of weeks where myself and our colleague would need to come and talk with you to um, ah. to publicize. So, okay, but I'll keep it under wraps for now. Okay, <laughs> okay. Now, yeah. we only have a few minutes, Terrence, but I'll tell you what, uh, there, there are a couple of reasons why we're going to be talking this morning. First of all, um, I understand that Rotary is celebrating a big anniversary. Yeah, 50th anniversary. 50th Correct. anniversary. Yeah, this, during this year. You guys are growing a mustache and a beard and yeah. all that, and you're getting gray? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> How are you celebrate? Uh, well, it's, um, we're still rolling out the plans, but we're going to be having, um, shortly we'll be having, starting with a, a church service and a fellowship activity um, among Rotarians and supporters, members of the business community who have supported Rotary, um, let's call it Rotary and friends and supporters. Mm -hmm. And um, during the first quarter of next year, we're planning a, a significant activity and we'll be rolling out um, plans on that um, very shortly. That okay. would involve, it would basically would be a, a, a tribute 
to those who have assisted the Rotary Club of Grenada mm -hmm. in assisting the Grenadian community mm -hmm. over the past five decades. You're, so talk you're talking about assisting the uh, Grenadian community. Now, I think a lot of people know what Rotary does, but for those who may not, let's talk a little bit about the sort of work that you guys do in the various communities. All right, George. So some of our... Um, some of our activities over the last few years, um, over the last, I think it's about six or seven years, we've had an annual, um, what we refer to as the VOSH Eye Clinic Program. VOSH is the acronym for Volunteer Optometric Services to Humanity. It's an international um, NGO um, comprised mainly of um, professional optometrists who volunteer their service um, in various parts of the world. So we have had this clinic on an annual basis where we have uh, provided uh, free eye care services to hundreds of um, Grenadians requiring this service. We also, over the last two years, we have implemented a number of what we refer to as WASH programs, W-A-S-H, water hygiene and sanitation projects, um, presentation brothers college and the St. George's Anglican Senior School um, would most recently come to mind. We have assisted the Cadrona Home for the Elderly uh, maintenance activities a couple of years ago. From time to time we assist students in need. We have an ongoing relationship with the Grenada uh, School for Special Education in the Limes where we've provided um, assistance, uh, main maintenance, repairs to the facilities after Hurricane Ivan several years ago. And uh, our club also hosts an annual Christmas party for the students of that school, for the kids of the special school. We uh, annually uh, make a contribution to New Law, New Life Organization, um, we support, we have the, the chores program, and George, let me not uh, forget that we have also uh, a major input into the development of Quarantine Park, Quarantine, quarantine Point, um, Quarantine Station is variously called. We have uh, expended, we've had some um, assistance from various corporate entities over the years, and in fact, on a continuing basis, we have assistance from uh, Flow Grenada for maintaining the, uh, the surroundings, the grounds. And uh, most recently, we would have received assistance from Grenlec, um, where we provided uh, lighting. So we have, uh, I think, seven or eight um, LED lights that are strategically placed around the perimeter of the, um, of the grounds. And that has significantly changed the, the landscape um, at night, so the, 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 the place is lighted, and it has significantly improved the security of Quarantine Park. Um, you would be aware also a few years ago, again with um, corporate uh, assistance from a couple of entities, including um, Gravel and Concrete Production Corporation and George F. Hoggins, we would have concreted the access road to Quarantine Park, which is a public road, but it is the main access as you, as you enter the park. So these are a uh, number of the activities that before we you, have. Before you move any further, uh, Terence, you know, let me say this. There's somebody who does some work with you guys in Candlelight, uh, Carols by Candlelight, young lady named Kellyanne. Yes. You know, you know Kellyanne? Yes. Kellyanne, and I, she took me down to Quarantine Park uh, a few weeks ago, and it's just amazing the transformation that's taken place at this place. And, um, you know, it's, it's always been nice. Even before you guys worked on it, it was just a nice place to be. But the work that you guys have done, incredible amount of work. Now, let me ask you this. There's also been talk in the, in the air in recent times about Quarantine Point going to some development project. Uh, uh, I think it's Blue Growth or whatever. Are you... Are you have you heard about it, and are you guys concerned that this could transform what you guys have done? Um, well, George, the, the Rotary Club of Grenada has a 33-year lease from the government of Grenada of the what we call Quarantine Point, mm -hmm. what we 
are in the process of converting the quarantine park or quarantine recreational park and we are trying to remain focused on uh, putting into place the fundraising well first of all the plans the projects which we are, are working assiduously on right now and have been for some time and thereafter the fundraising so that we can develop the park into mm -hmm. one of the few remaining um, green spaces mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. publicly accessible green spaces in the south of the island mm -hmm. that is what we are focused on um, we would have heard of this it's out there there's a document that's um, I think publicly in the public domain with uh, plans for uh, blue growth development mm -hmm. um, perhaps you could look at that as um, possibilities out there that somebody has sat down and put together um, but we have no um, immediate concerns in, mm -hmm. in the club right that our initiative in the creation and expansion and growth and development of quarantine recreational park is is in any kind of danger so mm -hmm. that's that's as much as i can see okay at this point in time we are focused on developing quarantine recreational park for the benefit of Grenadians and visitors alike you know it would be a shame after the sort of work that you guys have done on that that park especially in light of the fact you know there's also the possibility <laughs> that Kamahan Park is going uh, Zippo as well you know so um, one has to ask what the heck is going on at yeah. this place but well, uh, George <laughs> we'll discuss that at some other time that, that would be a topic for, for another discussion okay yeah let's let me just say that a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush I would leave it right there thank you very much now let us talk about Carolus by Candlelight, because I understand this year it's going to be something big, something special. Shoot. Carolus by Candlelight, um, I think this is our 10th um, year having it. It's our clubs, the Rotary Clubs of Grenada. It's our signature holiday and fundraising event. It's a Christmas wonderland that comes with beautiful lights, musical performances, dancing, singing, all in a safe family environment. Okay. Yeah? Um, there'd be fun activities for both children and adults making cars by candlelight, a perfect family holiday event, George. Mm -hmm. The activity, of course, is going to be held at Quarantine Recreational Park. That's located in Mont Rouge, South St. George. And it is carded for the first week in December. So that's just about five weeks away. Um, Sunday the second of December and it starts at four PM and it ends at ten PM. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about some of the activities, man, because I understand that there's gonna be a lot of goodies going on. Right. Now you see George the the um the Christmas holiday season has become over the years um you know, somewhat commercialized, and we often forget that it's a season for family, for sharing, for giving. Um, as they say, sometimes we forget the, the reason for the season. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And uh, because ro we do a lot of our work, our Rotary's work focus, focuses on communities and community building. And so we think that this is one of the ways that Rotary could say thanks by bringing communities and families together during the one of the most important uh, reflective times of the year. Mm -hmm. So Cars by Candlelight, it's a, it's a fundraising activity that benefits Rotary's various community projects. But having said that, George, it is not solely, it is not solely an event to raise money from the public. As I said, it's a dual um, objective of bringing the family, bringing the community together, right, and giving back to the community mm -hmm. in the process because particularly over the last few years, we have really um, raised our level of um, organization and I should, um, you know, give kudos here to our, our past president, um, Richard Strawn, who um, leads and champions the work of our clubs in the organization of um, Cars by Candlelight mm -hmm. over the last few years. Mm -hmm. So we've really upped our game, as we say. Mm -hmm. 
and we've increased the level of professionalism. I'll speak further to that. We've brought in some professionals to assist us in planning the implementation as, a, as, a, as an event, right? It is now a properly managed event. And um, so we make, we make uh, some surplus from it, but that is not the, the only objective. Mm -hmm. So, George, what can patrons expect at Carol's uh, this year? So I'm all ears. A Christmas wonderland. So, Quarantine Park uh, is going to be transformed into a Christmas wonderland. The venue will be decorated with lights, donated, as has been the case for the last several years, by the Benoit family of, of Grand Dance St. George. Right? There'll be a, a family movie on from 4 p.m. So, we are asking patrons and most people that come there come with their kids and so um, try to reach there early because there'd be a, a, a movie from 4 p.m. Um, Santa will be making his appearance with toy toys uh, giveaways. There'd be a professionally produced concert um, by Ricardo Keynes Douglas. I don't need to say anything more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, by yeah, way yeah, of introduction. yeah, yeah. Well, there'd Corey, I'm so yeah, there'd be acts from Grenada's top artists musicians and dancers and there'd be a special performance by the pbc boys choir um also an added future feature there'd be a, a holiday boutique with gift items and christmas decorations for sale and that is uh, one of the moves we've taken uh, uh, over the last few years is to partner with you know small businesses and so on and they are coming for a small fee they are allowed to display and to promote their, their, their goods. So that, is a, that would be one of the um, added features. And I can highlight the following local artists, uh, Jenny J, Jefferson Ramirez, now quite famous, Tamara, Tammy, Denison, um, etc. We're having um, a Trinidadian singer. Um, I don't know if you recall, there's a well-known... Um, Trini Christmas song, Santa Looking for a Wife. Yeah. Right. So many people may not know the name of uh, a guy by the name of Bindley B. That's right. He goes by. So That's he is right. um he is um coming over and he would be he'd be there to to add his voice. So lots of local and international food. Um last year we had some problems with the food. I think some of the stalls the food ran out and so on <laughs> because we had such an overwhelming um, response uh -huh. so this year there'd be even more vendors the customary bonfire for roasting smalls there'd be a wine lodge for adults there'd be a kids bar photo booth to commemorate the occasion and a, magnific a magnificent fireworks display at the end okay so essentially george it is a, a, a um a scaled up version of what we've been doing for the last several years. The ticket costs, of course, I can't leave it out um, publicizing that. $30 for adults, $10 for children under 12 years of age. Mm -hmm. Right? The ticket outlets, you can get tickets online at gotofet.com. Flow Grenada, Grenadian Optical, the St. George's outlet, as well as the Spice Dan Mall outlet. Gittens, Drug Mart, and of course from all Rotarians. Okay. Another feature, um, George, is that we'd be having um, guaranteed on-site parking, um, which can be accessed online for the fee of $12, and that $12 basically is a contribution towards Rotary and its work. But you must buy an entry ticket, and this has to be done online. And you'll be able to park at quarantine? Park? At the venue, yeah. There'll be limited parking at the venue. Okay. We're also trying to expedite a project where there's another section of, of um, Quarantine Park uh, that was in the lease to the Rotary Club of Grenada where we are going to be um, completing a small access roadway mm -hmm. and we're going to be clearing it and leveling it and you know compacting it and so on with TIFF and that should be able to hold about 60, 70 cars. So there'd be right. added parking facilities but limited parking in the venue itself. Date again? It is Sunday, the 2nd of December, first Sunday in December. That's next Sunday. Starting at 4 p.m. Pardon me? Next Sunday. No, 2nd of December. Oh, second so oh sorry, sorry, <laughs> we, sorry. We're still sorry, in October, sorry, George. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, so George. that's uh, 
sums it up. Okay. Thank you, Terence. And, um, you know, perhaps just before the event, you might want to come back and give everybody give a, it a little, little, little top-up, as top they say. Up, a top sure, George. Okay, that'd be thanks great. again for you have been a stalwart supporter of us and helping to publicize our events. As always, thank you very much. Because of the work that you guys do, man, Rotary does a heck of a job. Okay. Terence, uh, Terence Smith there, past president of the uh, Rotary Club of Grenada telling us not only about their 50th anniversary, but also their your hands are cold, man. Woo. Not only about uh, the anniversary, but also about uh, carols by candlelight. Now, folks, I'll tell you what. It's uh, 26 minutes after the hour. Um, I see that we're still having some buffering there on Facebook, but remember, when the program's over at 12 o'clock, it's going to be sent up to Facebook. It's also going to be on YouTube. But in the meantime, right now, you can listen to us live on GrenadaBroadcast.com, on TuneIn, on Radio Genre, on Radio Garden, four platforms. Let me take a moment here to say a quick hello to some of the people around the world who are listening this morning. They are in Wilde, Barbados, Scarborough, Ontario. That's in Canada. They're in Oldham in England. Virginia Beach, Virginia, Ellenwood in Georgia, Brooklyn, New York, Mississauga, Ontario, Wilde Barbados, Port of Spain, Trinidad, uh, ta -da, ta -da, Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, Bronx in New York, Basseterre in St. Kitts, Thornhill in Ontario, Miami, Florida, Dielsdorf in Switzerland with us this morning, Toronto is with us in Canada. Old Ham in England again, Brooklyn, New York, uh, Wilde Barbados, Ottawa, Ontario, Montreal, Quebec, Roseau in Dominica. San Fernando, Trinidad. Uh, Queens Village in New York, Pickett's in Antigua, Ellenwood in Georgia. Bethnal Green in England, Kennewick in uh, the United States, that Kennewick in Washington. Oshawa, Ontario, London, England, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Southall, or South Hall, and that's in England, Scarborough, Ontario, London, uh, Ontario, Canada, Charlotte in North Carolina, uh, Pompano Beach in Florida, Croydon in England, hello there, Croydon, Brooklyn, New York, Delray Beach, Delray Beach in Florida, uh, Branford, Ontario, North York, Ontario, Kingstown, St. Vincent, Maple, Ontario, Detroit, Michigan, Tunapuna, Trinidad, uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, Kingstown, St. Vincent, Port St. Lucie in Florida, uh, tons of duplicates here, Toronto again. Hey folks, thanks a lot for joining us on this beautiful Sunday morning. Let's take another little break here and we'll come on back with our next batch of guests after this. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, uh, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going to Food Fair to get a grocery, man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the Food Fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand. And with an order of $100 or more, Food Fair Granans will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. Their safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh baby, better hurry up and order, man. I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets.
It's good to be early. Pay your grand like bill on time. Grenlec Community Partnership Initiative. We're here in sincere appreciation to Grenlec as a utility corporation for the donation of that rooftop solar generating plant. It would reduce our monthly bill on behalf of the Hillsview Home residents and the wider community here at Gove to just thank Grenlec most sincerely for that thoughtful donation. Grenlec, energizing our community. Alrighty, folks, just about time. Now, I'm a little bit in a quandary here because I am expecting a phone call from a judge, a retired judge. This gentleman is a, a Grenadian, but he's been living in Canada since King Hatchet was a hammer, little guy. I'm talking about Mr. Romaine Pitt. He's a retired judge, and he did promise that he'd be giving us a call at about 10.30. I'm going to assume, for all intents and purposes, that he's just a wee bit late. And uh, in the meantime, we're going to carry on a little session here with uh, the people who are already in the studio. Okay? Now, let me see if I can pull them up. First of all, if you take a look. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. If you take a look. Uh-huh, uh, yeah, yeah, hang on a sec. We're going to take... Yeah. See that lady over there? Mm? Take a look at that lady. That smiling face is a young lady by the name of Karina Blash. Not Blanche, it's Blash. B-L-A-C-H-E, am I correct? Yes. Yes. Karina is the winner of a... Uh, an essay competition which uh, took place some time ago. And sh it was about the referendum on constitution reform. And this lady came out, I mean, gangbusters. And, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> uh, I think that may very well be our call from Canada. So just hang on a sec. Let me uh, see. Good morning. Uh, is this. Justice Pitt. Hello. Ah. Is it going to be one of those mornings? Justice Pitt, can you hear me? Okay. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again. Hold on a sec. Justice Pitt. Okay. Are you hearing me? Okay, hold on a sec. Okay, for some reason, he's, uh, he's hearing me, but I'm not sure why he is not on the air. Good morning, Justice Pitt. Good morning. Ah, there he is, Justice Pitt. Thank you very much for calling us, uh, Justice. Um, I really appreciate your responding to my request to appear this morning, and I also know that you have very limited time because you do have a, an 11 o'clock uh, engagement. But uh, the I'm reason. I'm not hearing you very well, no. Okay. I said the, the reason why I'm, uh, I invited you to be with us this morning is because you recently penned an article about the CCJ, and you were urging Grenadians to support the, e the CCJ. So in the yeah. limited time that you're going to spend with us, why don't you tell us uh, why you feel so strongly about the CCJ? The, the, you have, you have, the, the reception is poor, but let me, let me see if you can hear this. As I told you yesterday, I must meet seven people 20 minutes from where I sit in 20 minutes. So I, I would be much obliged if you let me uh, say what I have to say very quickly and leave. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, that's why I'm suggesting that you just tell us uh, why you feel so strongly about the CCJ because of the limited time that you have. The, the connection is poor. The connection is, is almost non-existent. Okay. So tell me why you support the CCJ. Not hearing. Tell me why you support the CCJ. Okay. Quickly, 
uh, since speaking to you, I was struck by a statement re uh, reported in the Toronto media made by Justice Saunders that he was perplexed at Caribbean people's non-acceptance of the CCG. I am perhaps even more perplexed. You have my recent note on the subject and another written last year, I think. Every independent country has a Supreme Court. It is a necessary part of the architecture of independence. West Indians fought long and hard for independence. I remember as a boy in Grenada, the West Indian newspaper, then a daily, by the way, the master of which stated that the West Indies must be West Indian. TMR issue had been its earliest editor, I think. A country can't be independent and be a colony simultaneously. Justice Saunders spoke of the anomaly that after 50 years of independence, the laws that we proudly make should ultimately be interpreted and applied by a British institution staffed with British judges, all of whom reside in Britain. For me, it's more than an, an anomaly. It is a reflection of the very, it's a rejection of the very notion of sovereignty. What is more, historically, the excellence of Palestinian lawyers has been never questioned. The notion that English judges will be wiser, less corrupt, or less susceptible to political influence has no basis in reality. There is substantial evidence that more timely justice is provided today in the CCJ than at the Privy Council and at less cost. That court should be considered as another building block like UWE, CARICOM, the cricket team that would in the long run contribute to the nations of the Caribbean coming together. Frankly, a central bank would be a marvelous idea in that same vein. Let's not confuse politics with the justice system. If the issue is the caliber of judges, the people should persuade the governments to appoint the best and the brightest and make the job of judging more attractive to the best lawyers. That what is done in Canada and other advanced countries. As I said in my note, inefficiency in administration of justice is not an argument against the court. I would urge Grenadians to vote yes and to affirm their own self-worth. For me, this is not a partisan issue. It is not a vote for or against the government in power. Thank you. Okay, uh, Justice uh, Pitt, thank you very much. Um, I do hope you get to your appointment on time and that we can talk again sometime in the future. Thank you very much. Right. Okay. Justice Romaine Pitt, he's a retired judge living in uh, Toronto. There you heard it. There's his summary. And now we're going to go local, if you will. Now, let's start with these two. Uh, I don't know if I should call these guys young men or... Uh, uh, whippersnappers or, or what, but the one on the left is a gentleman by the name of Mr. Norris Mitchell. He's described on the website as a retired architect and Mr. William Joseph, who political analyst, wh what the heck are you, Willie? Huh? <laughs> what are you? All that God has made me to be. <laughs> for that unmistakable laugh, okay? <laughs> Willie, uh, Willie, I've invited both Willie and uh, uh, Norris in here today because they have recently both published some very interesting articles, and I wanted them to come in here and sort of expound a little bit on those articles, okay? Um, we still have about an hour and 20 minutes, so I'm going to try and exercise... Uh, <sighs> Will you stop slapping your microphone? What has it done to you? Nothing. Nothing. I'm going to, ladies first. I'm going to go to the lady, okay? 
and she she's going to be free to join in at any point during the conversation but this is karina blanche and karina said it before young lady one i'm delighted to meet you because i was very impressed with what you wrote thank you um you are a student at tam cc yes what do you hope to study when you get old like me <laughs> well currently i'm studying law history and law sociology history. Law history and sociology. Yes. Okay. So I hope to pursue a career within the field of law. Okay. Okay. Now, when how long did it take you to put that story together? You obviously did a lot of research. Yes. Well, it wasn't just a one-off thing. So I researched over a period of time, probably a month or a few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I had to follow discussions by the committee. I read articles. I um, viewed interviews conducted by BBC Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So they were seeking person's opinion on the CCG and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to take a stand based on my opinion. So based on the research I did, I was able to come up with an opinion on the matter okay. to write about. As I read the story, uh, the, uh, the article that you wrote, um, I get the feeling that you have very strong feelings about the CCJ. You do want to see the CCJ happen, mm -hmm. but you also have concerns, am I correct? Yes. You know, if you think you're alone, think again, young lady, because you're not. A lot of people out there really want to see this thing happen. It would give us a sense of pride, mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, certain things just don't go down well with a lot of people. Let's start by talking about the things that you really like about the CCJ, because you clearly define them and the things you're concerned about. Well, first of all, the CCJ has potential benefits. For one, it is cost efficient, more cost efficient than seeking redress at the Privy Council, because, well, the CCJ is located in Trinidad, so that the cost of travel would be less than if you were to travel to England. Um, then the Privy Council, I read, has some form of leniency. For example, a person whose assets are under $5,000 would not be obligated to pay, um, you know, to get their case heard. It's an itinerant court, meaning that the courts can come to you if you don't have the monies to go. So the court can sit um, in I different... Heard that the CC, I heard that the Privy Council can also do that. They have left England and come down to various islands and heard cases. Well, I guess. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that one is kind of iffy. But I understand the point that you're making. Jumping on Liette and running down from there that doesn't cost nearly as much as jumping on BA or mm -hmm. Virgin. Hmm? And I also read that the CCG has e-filing, so yeah. instead of mm -hmm. yeah. so instead of you know going to drop your cases and so forth, you can file it online. Mm -hmm. So these are basically the benefits that I've read about so far on the CCG. Okay, now you also have a list of concerns. Shoot. Well, for one, I don't believe that the citizens are ready to make the decision because I don't think that enough legal discussions have been made. Well, not enough, but um, since this dis the discussions by the committee have been more centralized, persons within out, um, communities on the outskirts have not yet... So many of them still don't know what the CCJ is. They don't know about the functions and so forth. So I don't think that the people are ready to make that conscious decision to move towards the CCJ as yet. Um, I also think that... Before, hold on, before you move away from that one, let me throw a little spoke in here. Um, this is not the first referendum we're having pertaining to the CCJ. We had one back in November 2016, okay? Um, uh, there was a lot of... There were a lot of consultations held prior to that. Now, there are people who argued that these consultations were really not legitimate consultations and that when you went to a conversation, uh, consultation, you were being told what, to do. what they wanted you to hear rather than trying to hear what the people wanted to say. That was a big argument. Now, again, 
we have a, a referendum coming up next month. And it seems like we're faced with a similar si situation where right now there are consultations being held. Is it, my dear, uh, I had a young lady sitting in that same chair you're sitting in a few weeks ago with one of the strongest proponents of the CCJ. And you know what? A we did a program here. And after that program, she said, maybe we have the wrong people talking about the CCJ. Okay? And you know something, Karina? That hit me hard. It hit me hard. Because I have provided a platform here for everybody. Today, you see people for and against the CCJ <laughs> here. And every Monday, I have Dr. Alexis. I have Mr. Ferguson every Monday bugging away on the CCJ. Okay. But somehow, people are still saying they don't know enough. Could it then, you tell me, you're a youngster, could it be that the people just don't understand what these guys say? Yes, it could be. Maybe because of the language used. So I guess you could try to simplify it, simplify the language to fit the ordinary man so that they would really understand. Also, I think that the discussions, well, most discussions are like in central locations and in the time the, um, the discussions are held might not be suitable or convenient for some persons, you know, in terms of transportation and the time and so forth. So I guess that if they went into some smaller communities to really try to reach these people, they would really create a, an appreciation for the information they're given and they would be able to make conscious decisions, so forth. Okay, so maybe a slightly different approach might do it. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead. You were telling me about your other concerns. Um, I also raised in the essay that there are insufficient judges within the region. Um, yes, we have good um, trained judges who are capable of taking up the task, but I don't think that there are enough and this problem was a foreseen circumstance, and provisions have been made, or solutions have been suggested. Um, they said that they would try to get judges from other common law communities to work in the courts. But in my opinion, it's like, apart from the Caribbean region, England is another common law um, country. So it's like you fire the people in the Privy Council to hire them again. Because when, the, when there's not enough judges within the Caribbean region, we will most likely still have to look towards England to provide um, personnel for our courts. Mm -hmm. Also, um, our high court, we don't have a permanent building for our high court. So I think that the monies that are being channeled towards the referendum and putting CCJ as our final course of appeal can be used to develop um, a building or build up a place to have permanent um, high court hearings. Okay. I'm assuming that you have more to say about that particular issue. But I know that this is an issue that was also raised by this goodly gentleman here, Mr. Norris Mitchell. So um, feel free to jump in at any time while these two gentlemen are speaking. Free, no okay? But let me hear what Norris has to say. Norris, y you voice certain concerns about the, the readiness as well. Pardon? I don't hear you. I said you voiced certain concerns. She's saying that, you know, our court system here is not in the very best of shape. And you also voiced in your article some concerns about our readiness. Let me hear what you, you try and repeat what you said in that uh, article. Uh, but before I start, let me just expand a bit on the introduction that you made to Karina's uh, essay. You didn't mention anything about the Willie Reddit Foundation because the essay competition was put on by the foundation and she was the winner of the competition. So I think that for the public information, I think that should be stated. 
Okay, for the public information, the competition that uh, Karina won was in fact uh, organized, orchestrated by, by the Willie Foundation. Redhead Foundation. Oh, correct. And uh, this lady here is the lady who actually won that. Thank yes, you very sir. much, Norris. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, what are, well, first of all, let me state that I'm speaking in my personal capacity, not the Willie Reddit Foundation, right? The, I described the, the, you a little while. The is the foundation. I described you a little while ago as a retired architect. Okay, fine, that's okay. great. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, what prompted me initially to start this series of articles was when uh, it became public. I think it was announced made by the prime minister that they will be having a second referendum in November of this year. And um, the government is looking, or CRAC, which the organization that represents the government is looking for a yes vote. Now, that's all well and good. But when I looked into the reason for the referendum and for a crack and for a crack to be asking the people Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, this time around I know that crack was a big name in the run up to the last Election referendum. Or referendum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this time around I'm not hearing crack except from you, Norris. Well, the only isn't, person isn't, isn't, isn't um, an organization headed by Sir Lawrence Joseph? That's the chairman yeah. of. The isn't it called a Constitution Advisory Committee? Yeah, Constitution. Yeah, uh, but it or it's not crack anymore. That's no, what you're no, oh, no, I, I, I'm the not Constitution saying it, Advisory Committee. I'm not All saying right. it's. I'm not saying it's not. I'm saying I haven't heard anybody but <laughs> Norris Mitchell well, refer. You, you seem to have been. Subject you to become correction. addicted with crack. Subject to correction. Anyway, that organization that is running for the government, which is headed by Sir Lawrence Joseph. Okay, right. That's the organization I'm talking about. Okay. Right. Now, the, the impression I'm getting is that instead of informing the public, and I think you mentioned that earlier, of the reason why we want a yes vote, the whole situation became almost like a political campaign for a yes vote. And the, the, the voters, the public, were not advised as to the reasons why they want a yes vote. Now what emerged eventually was that an act was passed, a bill was passed in Parliament not so long ago, asking the public to vote yes or no. And that is not whether they're addressing yes or no for the, con for the CCJ. They're asking the, country, the public to vote yes or no on the bill. Now, the problem is not many people know, except probably the organizers, know what is in the bill. And this is where the problem for me comes in, that a vote is being asked, a yes vote is being asked. But the people who are to vote on that have no idea what's in that bill. And I think that was made very clear by um, lawyer Claudette Joseph in a one or two of her television programs. Mm. Right. So this is one of the main concerns that I have. Mm -hmm. the, b the, besides the detailed articles that I write and the reasons given, this in general gives your overall view of what my concerns are. All right. Now, you want to comment, Clarina, before? No. Okay. Let's turn things around a little bit here to the younger of the two young men, <laughs> Mr. William Joseph. Willie, you heard what uh, Kareem had to say. You heard what uh, Norris had to say. <clears throat> First of all, do you want to rebut either of these folks? Or do you just want to tell us about the articles that you have been putting out and why? Okay, I don't know that I want to approach it in any of those two ways, <laughs> but simply to, uh, um, to add to the conversation. Let's put it that way. Okay. Um, now, this matter is of significant national importance. And I think uh, the authorities 
and other responsible groups and individuals do have an obligation, in my view, uh, to cover the ground thoroughly and properly so that the public um, is well informed. So the issue regarding public awareness is one <clears throat> that I agree with, although I have to say that on this occasion, I believe much more has been done than in 2016 on the subject matter. But really, this is not, in my view, a lawyer's issue or a politician's issue. It is a citizen, citizen issue. Justice is about the citizen. Okay? Now, to the extent that politicians and lawyers and so on um, have an interest, uh, an important and significant interest, yes, of course, uh, they express their views. But what we are having is a sort of takeover of the discussion so that we have um, the tone and texture has now you know, this lawyer say that and this lawyer say that and this party say that and that party say that and that the public is left in nowhere really trying to sift through all of that mischief. So I think I, think, uh, I, I would want to say that. The second thing I want to say broadly and I hope we get into some more substantive matters later on, I'm sure we will, the question of fear. <laughs> In other words, we build up a whole set of preconditions. This ain't ready yet. This should be first. This should be there. It reminds me of our attitude surrounding independence back in 74. Yes, we say for independence. We say the same thing today for the CCJ. But not under Gary. So we can invent any number of conditions, X, Y, and Z, to, you know, depending on our interests in a matter um, uh, to cause the public to be confused. Now, All right, hold on a minute. Let me, ask, let, me, let me ask you a question here. Yes, I'm hearing a lot of concerns, and the more you hear, the more you hear. Okay. But let me ask you this. Isn't it, in part at least, due to the fact that perhaps the people aren't being told what they want to hear? And so people just keep asking, asking, asking. Is that yeah. part of it? Yeah, I agree with that. <clears throat> I would say yes. So that the arrangements that we've put in place, meaning the authorities, to handle this, those arrangements, in my view, have been deficient. I think that what we needed to do, the authorities, was to make available to the public a public relations machinery. Yeah, these fellows who are in the crack, mm -hmm. Or, or whatever they call it. Let me tell you room. something. This man has a patent on yeah. crack. Leave him alone, okay? <laughs> no, we're from the same hometown, so you wouldn't hit me. The, 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 the guys who are on that thing stay in the background, okay? Provide the explanations, the answers, and let the PR people build the right psychology onto these things. Simplify them so that the public could understand. No, we are talking about justice and the arrangements for justice. What is that value? And who is it? Who is it, um, more likely than not, um, um, expects or is entitled to, to justice? We will come to that later. Let me say this last preliminary point. And I'm attaching it to this question of fear and conditions and preconditions and so on. In 1974, being a schoolboy then, we were on the streets every morning. Gary, no to Gary, no to independence under Gary. As schoolboys, we didn't know what the hell it is that we were opposing, but we were in, we were in the bandwagon. Eh? So independence meant nothing to us of my age and generation. It meant nothing. When the revolution came, ah, that was our independence. We attached to that. And so between 1974 and 2000, 2000, I am standing on the porch of the Board of Tourism office. 
and I hear a chant coming across the carnage. As it got closer, I realized that it was the little tots from the Green Street Primary School. They were all decked off in their national colors. It was independence of that year. They were singing and chanting and decked off in the national colors, going to a presentation at the park there. And I stood on that porch and the tears came down my face. Why? Because I was convicted as a guilty man, not caring about independence in 74, not even trying to understand the thing. You see, and it took me 26 years. So I don't want to, listen, I am a yes voter on the CCJ issue. I voted yes in 2016, and I will vote yes again on the 6th, God's willing. This is important beyond party interests, beyond little conditions and so on, beyond fair. So I, I will leave it there for the time being and, and come back with more soon. All right. Um, let me ask you this. I want to touch on something you said a few minutes back because... Uh, you were talking about, um, you know, all the excuses that people seem to come up with. Back in the days of Gary, there were people who, they wanted independence, but not under Gary. Willie and Karina and Norris, let me ask you guys something. Is it just me, or am I picking up something on the ground out there that while people want the CCJ, they don't want it under Mitchell? Uh -huh. huh? They don't. That's right. You see, and uh, that uh, is the uh, point. And that's, uh, why, that's, why, that's why I draw attention to the, to the independence Gary era. So here's what's going to happen to us. Party X is in power now. And by virtue of that authority of the government and so on, they are put into the public this particular um, reform of the Constitution. And Party X is not in power. Party Y is not in power. And they found ways and reasons to say, no, 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 no. Where does it leave us? Cycles of frustration. So in other words, when Party Y comes in power next time, Party X is going to say, well, when I try to bring the reform, you block me. You are in power now. You try to bring it. I will block you. And therefore, the people, that's my concern. We, the citizens, get shortchanged as the parties engage in all these low-level intrigues. And that's my problem. And I say low-level intrigues because when you listen to the conditions that they're attaching to the thing, and you sift that, really, really, they, 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 some of them uh, they are not valid, some of them are partially valid, but you know, they're not, they don't make the, the farce. Little trees here and there. This is not a farce. We could go ahead with these things. And, and, and something that bothers me a lot is a number of these um, antagonists uh, in, in the process very well understand how the court approaches the question of the interpretation of constitutional provisions. They know. And they also know the rules of statutory interpretation. So you might have flaws in a bill and so on. No bill is perfect. I don't know that any bill is perfect, but flaws in the bill um, uh, cause us to say, no, 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 no. And I don't, I, my brother has made a, a point regarding CCG and bill, and we're voting on bill. Well, every bill sets out its purpose up front. It may have all sorts of stuff in the body, but it tells you what is the purpose of the thing all right. up front. And that is where, you see, Last point. There is a difference. We're talking the, the psychology of the voting thing now. In general elections, the public is not required to read anything. You listen to fellas. Sometimes people don't even listen. And they, they just go and vote who they like. Right? With referendum, you are required to read. You are required to read. So it's not just a question of people telling you this and that. You have to be clear now that you understand what the object of the thing is. 
And that is what is, is critical. And that is where, if you had had a PR outfit um, covering this thing, they will be selling that to the public. You can't go to the public with every little minor de detail that you have to put out procedurally in, in, in a bill. That's, not, that's an All overload. Right. All right. Okay. We're going to get back to you in a bit, Willie. But a little while ago, uh, Norris wanted to say something. Uh, Norris, you still have that on your mind? Yes. Uh, I think the perception that people <laughs> don't want the CCJ under the Mitchell government, I, I, I don't think that is, I think that's fallacious. I think what people are looking for is justice. Now, that was mentioned very briefly, I think, by Winnie. The whole point of this referendum is whether Grenadian will get a higher level of justice. And uh, that resonates with me, because that is where I started to look at the CCJ. Out of my personal experience of the justice system in Grenada, now, I don't want to give you a long story, but the long and short of it is that I was having some problem personally with my neighbor, and I requested an injunction against him, which I got, and the court gave me, um, what you call it, uh, the, the, the rule in my favor, right? Now, my lawyer, and I'm going to call his name because he's a very active member, a proponent of the CCJ, Ruggles Ferguson, his um, company, Siboney Chambers, they represented me. And I got judgment in my favor. But what is justice, what is a judgment in my favor if the, ju the judgment cannot be enforced? So I spent, what, the matter went to court for over eight years. And up to now, I uh, have not got the, the ruling of the judge in compensation for what was happening to me. Now, what I'm talking about is justice. Now, I think it came up recently that one or two of the local judges had to release a couple of prisoners because of the lack of, what you call it, transcript from the registry. Well, my transcript took two years to reach the, 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 the judge. And uh, after I got the judgment, it could not be enforced. So my point is, would the CCJ correct that sort of injustice to the public? Now, you, we, we're talking about the, the use of the, C, the, the, the benefit of the CCJ. And what is being plugged to the general public is that the CCJ would complete our independence and break the change of colonialism. Mm. But I cannot see how that will happen when we don't have a justice system or a local justice system which does not function. And this brings me now to the, the problems of our local courts. Now everybody know now because it's common knowledge that the courts cannot sit and, and dispense justice because the facilities, the buildings and the facilities are just not there, right? And the courts are a, what you call it, uh, an arm of the government. They are an independent arm of the government. They have to function in order to render justice to the local man in the street. Well, that is not happening. And uh, if you talk to the people at the Bar Association, and especially the, the current president of the Bar, that is one of the current problems in Grenada, that the courts cannot sit because there are no buildings and facilities so that local justice can be dispensed. Now, would the CCJ correct that? This is a matter for our local administration to put the whatever is in place that is necessary so that we can have local justice first. And this is what people are saying. Why rush to the CCJ when our local system is just dysfunctional? It's not functioning. 
you know, right. I, I, may I come in on that point? Because it falls in the, in the category called um, fix, that I call fixed internal problems. Hmm? Now, all of these internal problems that Norris has just uh, described, all of them have existed for a lifetime under the Privy Council. So we have to remember, so in other words, <laughs> there is an appellate court at the highest level called the Privy Council right now. It has been in there, there since, the, in, since our independence. And these problems today, the Privy Council is in place today, the problems are in place today. No one has suggested that the Privy Council ought to play some role in having these measures sorted out. Or that perhaps we should suspend our, mem our, our um, going to the Privy Council until we sort all these things. So, fundamentally, I think we should appreciate that the CCJ is an appellate court, just as is the Privy Council. Yeah. Well, I, what will go to the, Privy, to the CCJ? Matters which would have come out of the domestic court system. All so, right, if right. there are problems there, it is unfair to link those problems and then tell me that, listen, a condition for having the CCJ is that we resolve all of these internal problems. All right, let me yeah. hear you. But uh, that's, that's not the, the point that I'm making is that, and Willie is mentioning, what we are experiencing in our local justice system has nothing to do with the Privy Council. And it has nothing to do with the CCJ. It has to do with our local administration. The, the facilities that are required to dispense local justice in Grenada is just not there. So we are talking about the CCJ and the, the rush to the CCJ. And everybody is asking, what is the rush? What is the rush about? While our local court system does not function. So the man in the street is saying, fix what we have locally and then in the future, when everything is working locally, mm -hmm. then we go to the CCJ. Perhaps we don't, we don't, we will not even need to go to the CCJ if our locals. All right. All right. Wow. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> hey, 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 hold on, hold on. Karina, I see Karina nodding hey, there. She's listening to uh, uh, Norris. Nor what's going through your mind, girl? I'm agreeing with Norris because. What is a rush? Is the present system broken or ineffective? We need to fix our local courts before trying to go... Take a step forward. Yes. All right. Willie, well, <laughs> Willie's <laughs> going to disagree with that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, and I tell you, I, I would love for somebody to tell me what is going to take to fix, to fix the thing. Listen, the courts are symbolic of the society. There's imperfections all around us and in, and in us. We will always have issues. There will always be issues. When the, when the British had the House of Lords and so on and so on, they had, they had problems. And when they started off with the House of Lords, Back then, you think there weren't problems? Did they say, let's fix those before we have the House of Lords? No. You make arrangements. You make arrangements for the provision of justice to the people. Justice is a social and cultural value. Not a, polit not a political thing. It is a social and cultural value to which the citizen, the citizen is entitled to enjoy. The state must make arrangements by way of the facilities, in this case, the setting up of the courts, All right. to, have it, to have it available. All right. Willie, uh, let me uh, turn to the shout box here for just a minute. Um, first of all, um, Frank Alexander says, the gentleman is giving a good lesson. I think he said that when you were speaking a little while ago. And then he went on to say, stop trying to fool people people. Then, we will rise. I love that name, Karina. We will rise on the shout box. says, so, do we say, if it's not broken, do not interfere with it? Willie, come on. Let's move to a new era. Change is constant. 
And then when Karina was speaking a little while ago, he says, yes, my sentiments. Let us fix what needs to be fixed first. And also, Willie said, people have to read. And can he answer the question of how many persons will stop to read? <laughs> but I mean, that can be with respect. I don't know that the, 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 the contributor sincerely wishes me to, to answer that question. I was making the point in principle okay. that the psychology is different. All right. Let me take a break here. <laughs> you guys can take a deep breath. I will take a little break and try to pay some bills and come on back after this. For convenience, bill payments can be made at Bill Express at Western Union. Many of these are open until 6 p.m., including Saturdays. A 24-hour check drop box is also available at Grand Lex Customer Care Centers at Grand Dance and Bruce Street. I'm always on the move. Training. Traveling. Competing. So it's good to know I have Quad Bank in the palm of my hand. Introducing eBanking, one of many customer convenience services from Grenada Corporate Bank. And there's more to come. It's swift, simple, and secure. Welcome home. So, babe, mm -hmm. Alberto and Beryl come and gone, right? So that means we still have Chris, Debbie, Florence, Michael, Patty, Sarah. From the looks of it, Tony and Valerie might be coming as well. So we need to pick up some extra hurricane supplies. You don't know how many hurricanes will be coming this season. So you need to be prepared. At Hubbard's Hardware and Building Supply Department and the Food Fair Supermarkets, everything from canned foods, flashlights and batteries, to plywood, tarpaulin, lanterns, roof repair kits, water tanks, etc. are available. For over 90 years, we've helped you prepare for and recover from storms. Hubbard's is an integral part of your hurricane preparedness plan. Get discounts when using credit and debit cards. We have a date of history. The issue for the 6th of November is to vote on a bill. Could you enlighten the audience as to your motives for moving away from the JCPC? It is necessary to give citizens of Grenada the, uh, the right to appeal the outcome of general elections to the High Court, the Court of Appeals, and to the Caribbean Court of Justice. Do we give funds to the Privy Council? In Dominica, do you swear allegiance to the Queen? The advisory committee really needs to take its role serious. Whatever we have to give to our polit political opponents, we will give. Vote yes, vote no. It's referenda on the CCJ in Grenada and Antigua. Join the discussion on Sunday, October 28th on Time to Face the Facts. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, uh, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going food fair to get a grocery man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the food fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just to log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand and with an order of $100 or more, food fair granites will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. Their safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and food fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh, baby, better hurry up and order, man. I already did. This should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. All right, I'm back with my guest this morning. And uh, before I turn it back to these guys and lady here, there's a note down the box from Frank Alexander. He says, George. I agree with everything that he articulated. What he is articulating this morning, man, and somebody out there is agreeing with him. That's good. Tessa says, Are we to 
say that if a flaw exists, where is it? No attempts should be made to write it because it has been a flaw for a decades. Test it. Uh, uh, who, who, who's going to answer that right? Anybody? Nobody's going to answer that right. several issues that need the, the authorities need to be confronted on in their own right. My problem is that we are now saying, oh, link it to. It reminds me of people who, for example, um, the attractions so-called in Grenada, if you, you may be my toys on these. Oh, fix it for the tourists. Well, is it for the tourists that we must fix it? because we're getting tourists, or must we fix it because we, the people, need to enjoy the thing ourselves? So, separate the issues. There are problems here in, 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 in the uh, provisions for uh, operating the, the, the country. We must be fixed in their own right. Somebody will turn around and say, well, fix the hospital problem before you fix, you go to a court. No. So we're introducing and inventing all kinds of uh, preconditions. Some of them are really irrelevant. But my short answer is to say, no. The point is that we must tackle these things in their own right. And there's no merit, in my view, to suggest that because the CCJ thing is on the table, we must, we must say, oh, let's fix that first before we do that. We must put the pressure on the regime to fix those problems and delink them, separate them from the question of having the CCG established as a final appellate jurisdiction uh, court for the country. Yeah, well, I would, I would like to <laughs> give a contrary explanation. We are talking about justice. And uh, if you're going to the CCG for more justice and for the highest level of justice, and the local people in Grenada cannot get local justice. I'm asking the question, what is the point? What is the purpose? You, you have, well, most Grenadians will tell you that they have been at the court for years trying to solve or whatever problems they have. They have legal problems. They have the system itself that doesn't function. And to say to the link it and to put one separate from the other, to me, does, to me, my, me, personally, it doesn't make any sense. Because if we're talking about justice and we're going to the highest level for justice and the local level of our justice system doesn't function, I don't see how this thing makes any sense to me. <coughs> that is my no. query to that. There must be scores of individual, on the other, individual citizens who would say that I got justice in the court. I could see that, you could see that. You may, have had a, you may have had more than one case before the court on which you may have very, very well have been satisfied with the judgments in two of them, but dissatisfied in another. So these things, it goes with the territory. My no, point well, is not uh, that. Uh, just to let me chip in there. I'm not talking about my personal case. No, no, no. I'm talking generally <laughs> in Grenada. Everybody is complaining about the justice system. Well, it cannot be everybody. And, and it, and it um, well, most people, a lot of people. Yes. And, and the, the problem has been explained even at the Bar Association, where they are given the government certain conditions and time scheme to put things in place so that the local system can function. All right. And I think that is a reasonable request for, for, the, from the, for the people of Grenada. You, you, you fix the local system, everybody is happy, and then we go to the CCJ whenever it's necessary to go to the CCJ. All right, so the problem is we are getting the impression that there is some ulterior motive for going to the CCJ because everybody is rushing for the September, November 6th. And everybody's asking, what is, the, what is the magic date? What is November 6th? What is the magic date of November 6th? Why can't it wait when there are so many other pressing locals that need to be fixed? So this is, this is how I see it. All right. Um, first of all, on the box, Mango Coot 
Sir or ma'am, I would really love to share your thoughts with uh, my guest here, but unfortunately, I have read your post over and over and over again, and I haven't got a clue what you're trying to say. So please, take some time and try it again. Frankel Marshall says... I want to go to the top floor of a building I have a ladder with the first six treaders missing. What do I do? Tell me, Willie. Mm, what he has? Frank, boy, I don't know what happened Pillars to these are people. missing and he wants to go up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand what these people are saying. No, you know, no I, think I, I think I get the yeah, sense. I got, I got the points. I get the sense. <laughs> you want to go up. Here, here is the issue. Let us look at the structure of the court system. Hmm? You have the magistrate's court, you have the high court, you have the court of appeal, and you have, in our case now, the privy council. And we're simply saying that we want to replace the privy council with the CCJ. All of the problems that people have experienced, that they might, some might call injustice, um, and on the other hand, there are people who are well satisfied that they have had justice in the court system. All of them, or the two experiences, have been had with the CCG as their final appellate uh, court. The CCG does not, is not in, a, in, in any sort of administrative um, relationship with the local courts to say, fix this and fix that. So it is the authorities who must provide for the facilities and they must make sure that the judges are properly paid and so on and so on and so on. And, and the, 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 the registries function properly. I go with all of that. None of us would argue against that. My issue is this. While those things exist, we go, those of us who have the need for it and can afford it, take our matters to the Privy Council, as is right now. So it seems to me that under the, the question is you, you replace the Privy Council with the CCG, the, the dysfunctional con situations continue to exist at the lower courts, at the high court, and so on and so on, they're there. Those must be fixed in their own right. They must be fixed in their own right. But we're trying to seize upon this question of, the, of an opportunity to change from Privy Council to CCG. And, 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 and the argument then becomes, oh, fix everything below first. I, with due respect, I don't agree with that. I don't see any particular merit in it. And let us ask ourselves, let us get up, let's not discuss this thing about justice in a vacuum. Let us talk in practical terms about who it is, our record in Grenada, regarding who it is among us, or fellow citizens, who would require um, um, justice at the very highest level. So we must start at the foundation. If you look at the records here in Grenada, over 90% of particular categories of crime are committed by young, poor, or working class, or unemployed people. Hmm? That's a reality. They are the ones coming up who would need justice to be done throughout the system. You have companies, big companies, small companies, all requiring the thing. Big companies, presumably, can go to the Privy Council because they are, they are able to pay. Small companies right. may not be able to pay. So, so the fundamental thing is, who is this justice for? Okay. Mango Coot says, and I'm assuming this is for you, Willie, mm -hmm. does he have any idea where joining the CCJ ranks in terms of priority of ordinary Grenadians in regards to justice? And I see Karina bobbing ahead. I'm going to ask her to comment on this. But I want repeat his, his question. Does he have any idea where joining the CCJ ranks in terms of priority of ordinary Grenadians in regards to justice? Not even number five, says Mango Coot. Well, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing, we go back to 74, 
we would say it was not a priority of a lot of Grenadians about independence. There comes a time in the life of the nation where important things need to be done. So let me, let me jump from that. But the no, hold on, because I want, uh, I want this lady to chime in as well. She can't just be sitting there looking pretty. <laughs> Come on, man. Of course, I apologize. Karina, Karina. Well, I agree with him because it's not a, pr it's not a must right now. Eventu I mean, the world is evolving. Eventually, we will get to the stage where we can uh, embrace the CCG. But right now, is just a little too soon. <laughs> it's not really a priority because we have other things that could... You know, y you raised a point there. And I have to ask myself this question. I have to be fair. I mean, when, when is the right time? Okay, when is the right time? I mean, we have had a referendum before, True. and now we're going through the process of educating the people again. But hold on, let me also ask this. Somebody raised a point to me this week. We had a referendum, the people turn thumbs down. Does the government intend to keep going back to referenda until they get the result that they want. Come. Everybody seems quiet on this one. I want to hear some answers, Matt. Or is this what democracy is? I think it was Lou Smith mm. who raised this point on Facebook mm. this past week. Mm. You had a referenda. People say, no. It's closed. No, no, no. Two years later, another referendum. Now, what happens if people say no again? Two years from now, another referendum? And he's asking, is this what the democratic process is all about? Well, it may well involve that. And in fact, if you read the language of the, um, the opposition party, they too if they were to form the government tomorrow, will come with a referendum on the very subject. So it's not about convenience. The thing is about leadership of the nation. And leading the nation, you address not only its economic and welfare needs, you address the social needs, you address, address the justice needs. And I am not in the business of categorizing and say, oh, this one before that one and that one before that one. All of them are valid and important. Now, and th for that reason, Norris, I do not admire the, the anti-colonial argument. I don't think that we need to go there. As far as I'm concerned, we are, we are, to, we are t to focus as a, as a country on the development needs of the society. And one aspect of that is justice. And that's where the CCG comes in. So the CCG constitutes a development standard Willie. for us. Willie, you haven't answered the question yet. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, but come I on, man. You, you're that. tap dancing here now, Willie. The, the question was, do we have a referendum until they get the desired result? But I answered, George, I said <laughs> at the top, I said, even now as we speak, the opposition party that favors um, the CCJ, but has some preconditions and so on, that if they were to come to power tomorrow, they themselves would be bringing a referendum. So the answer is yes, it will keep, on going, it will keep going on. Yeah, but, but I appreciate it as a function of leadership. Let me hear what uh, yes. Norris has to say. Norris. We have been talking about this referendum now for the past, what, three months since it has been declared that we have a referendum. And there has been in the media and in general conversation, a lot of information has been coming out of the general public. The information that is coming out is not from the organization but from the people who are discussing the issues of the referendum. And the people are saying, going back to Willie's comment, that they need to have the local system fixed first. That's what they're saying. 
all around the people that are saying. That's what some people yeah. are saying. Well, I, I got it that a lot of people are saying that. All the different discussions you hear on television, on radio, in the street. What is the bad rush about? That's what they're asking. What is the rush? When you have so many local things that need to be fixed, that's what they're asking. And that's what I'm asking. You, you have this court system, the local court system is dysfunctional. It is not working because of the obvious reasons that you have stated. Why is it that you rush into the CCJ? <laughs> I, I know that, uh, as Willie says, there are two different things. You should, uh, they should not be connected. But we are living in a real world. We are living in a world where things happen, not theoretically, but in actual, actu actuality. And the people are saying that, well, you say not much, but I'm getting the vibes that okay. they want the local system fixed first All right. before we rush to the CCJ. Before I, go to, before I go to another break, let me turn to Karina for a minute. Karina, let's assume for all intents and purposes eh, that we only have, what, let, a little over a week to go before the mm -hmm. referendum. Huh? Pardon me? Yes. A little, okay, a little over a week. If, if you knew, and they are, if you knew that the government was listening to you right now, they don't have a lot of time left, what would you say to them about preparing the Grenadian people to go to the polls on the 6th of November? Or would you say to them, mash the brakes, hold strain for a minute, just delay this for a little bit. What would you, what would you say to them? Young people talking here now, <laughs> you and me. Okay, well, if they intentionally plan to, you know, try to get the support of Grenadians, I would suggest that they um, encourage Grenadians themselves to read more and find out about the potential benefits and the, the downside to accepting the CCG. Because this is a real matter. It's not something that, okay, if we accept it, and then two months into the CCG, you realize... Okay, wait, we made a mistake. You can't just jump out and go back to the Privy Council. So they need to make sure that the programs that they are, or the consultations that they are doing, can reach everybody in a way that everyone understands and not just tell the people what to do. Because they need to understand it for themselves so that they can make a conscious decision. So if it means going into smaller communities or... Um, trying to be more make an impact in the workplace so like you go targeting teachers you target persons in the bank or so forth have more forums that everybody would understand and i think the most effective one would be um on a community level but you can't you can't go to every community but at the same time if you plan to go to smaller communities it would require time time that they don't have at this moment because still a lot of people they really don't know about the CCJ. So many would just stay home. Others would, you know. Kareem, you mentioned a little while ago, tell the people to read more. Right? Did you say words to that effect? People, did you say words to the effect that government should tell the people to read more? Or they should provide material for them to get access to the information. Kareen, I have heard it suggested, Willie, Norris, Karina that we're not a reading people, mm -hmm. all right? Let me tell you something. That is hogwash. Do you know how many people are on Facebook today? What do you think they do? What do you think they do? What do you think they do on Facebook? But uh, maybe the topic of the CCJ uh, just doesn't interest them enough thank, to read. Thank you, Karina. Thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. It's the message that is being presented. You go on Facebook, man, you... <laughs> Always, mm -hmm. not just when you're at home, you're on the bus, you're in your office, you're in church. So, Facebook. They're reading what they are interested in. They're reading what they're interested And the way the CCJ has been presented to the people has just gone right over their heads. But, you know, that is for that, that's exactly why I said at the top that really the, the arrangements to do the public education, those arrangements were flawed. Right? And uh, we need a PR entity. 
to build out the arguments to sell the thing to the people. Okay? So that, that has happened in a limited way, perhaps insufficiently. Mm -hmm. But I don't argue on, a street, on the extremes. I think we ought to find ourselves somewhere in the middle to make sense of our reality. So with respect, my sister, I do not see any risk of mistake in joining the CCG. That you join today and tomorrow you discover is a mistake. How do you arrive at that? There are four important countries in the region uh, who, that are members of the CCG. Barbados, Guyana, Belize, and Dominica. The CCG has been servicing the citizens of those countries for the last few years at the highest level of justice of provision. So, I have heard nowhere in any of these countries where people have been appalled by decisions of the CCG or that the CCG has come publicly to be known as such a, a, a body that is so frivolous that people have to say, well, 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 what? You're not worth okay, it. Willie, not case. okay, Willie. Well, in that case, my friend, why haven't people, and I'm not talking about the political directorate in those four territories, I'm talking about the man on the street who is benefiting from the CCJ. Why haven't those people been brought to talk to our people, people well, they can relate to? That's right. Instead, we bring the politicians. Well, you see, that's the problem. I agree. I agree. It, it, the mechanism, it, the messengers have not been the best. But let us footnote on this thing. Who is the Grenadian citizen who requires justice at the highest level? Who among us? We all have an interest. But in terms, in, we're not talking in a vacuum. Uh, you have an interest. That interest can only be realized in the context of accessibility. And accessibility has to do with two things affordability, and the procedural arrangements. Okay? So, so, so we have to be very clear. So, cost, cost must be a big factor. So if you have 90% of your crime, um, your, 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 your population who are inclined to commit crime and other forms of wrongdoing, falling, talking the demographics now and class issues, Poor people, working class people, unemployed people, youth. They are the ones who are going to need access up the road. The companies will have the access because they could pay for it. The big companies. You with your small company can't go to the pre privy council. You can't. So you won't get justice there because you can't get there. You can't get there. You see? I, so I, we have to understand who is the, the Grenadian citizen. Who would most yeah. benefit Norris? Yeah. I would want to counter that statement by saying, just turning it over on, the, on, on his head, because Willie is saying that the people who would mostly need justice, I'm, I'm substituting the word justice, are the poor, the unemployed, the marginalized, and the whatever other. Well, these people are the people I'm talking about that need justice at the magistrate level, at the ordinary court level, and at the, the Supreme Court level. These are not the people that are going to the CCJ. These are the people that need local justice. Yes, see, but they need the justice from the magistrate's court. That's where most of the cases are, yeah, the but, magistrate's but, court. But with respect, so Paris. so how, how, how do you jump from the magistrate court right on to the CCJ. These people don't need no, the CCJ. with respect. Follow the my logic. Follow my logic, please. <laughs> Matters reach the Privy Council having gone through the three levels of the local court. So, the presumption here... So, remember, you have a crime doer, a wrongdoer. And my argument is that that wrongdoer is typically a poor person, a working class person, but okay, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, a youth and so on. So, so those people go to the to the magistrate's court. They go to the high court. They go to the OECS Court of Appeal. These are the very people who might be aggrieved at the level of a decision of the Court of Appeal. The the the, the, the actors don't change. 
it, it, you don't be, yeah. the litigant from the court of appeal is not any different from the litigant who goes to the privy council it's the very same litigant so right. that's my point all right that's your point yeah. now my my point <laughs> is very quickly norris yeah. because i want to <laughs> i want to make sure that, that i uh, pay people, my bills these people who are disadvantaged their matters are fixed either at the magistrate court level yeah, or I the high that. court level. They don't yeah, reach the, the, the CCJ. That's yeah, the point. That. That's the point I'm making. You can't argue that because the argue that is to say okay, that it is the elitist. All right, Willie. The elite who Thanks. can get there. That's, that's the problem. Thanks a lot, Willie. We're going to take a little Conveniently break. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Centre. For over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, uh, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going to Food Fair to get a grocery, man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the Food Fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just to log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand and with an order of $100 or more, Food Fair Granans will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. Their safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh, baby, better hurry up and order, man. <laughs> I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Can I have a chicken lunch, please? Large. Real nice today. Mm -mm. I don't want that. But you just asked for a chicken lunch. I don't have problem with the lunch. I afraid the container. Why is the problem with it? These styrofoam containers, they don't go for the environment. They shorten me life. What, what foolishness are you telling me? So what do you want me to use? Put my food in this. Where you get that? At the food fair, where you could get all biodegradable food boxes and disposable food supplies like cups, plates, anything you could think about. Name it, it's there. And they don't harm the environment. Food Fair, taking the lead in cleaning up and protecting the environment. Hey, hey, like you take me advice, you get in your biodegradable food supplies. Well, girl, I supporting who's supporting the environment. That is why I shop in that Food Fair. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Products distributed by Hubbard's agency, Kirani James Boulevard. to be early. Pay your grand leg bill on time. Alrighty folks, we're starting to run out of time, but I'll tell you what, um, we've been a little bit unfair this morning. Uh, for those of you who may be trying to reach us on uh, either Magic Jack or on the landline 440-7746, do me a favor. 
I want you to make a note of this number and try reaching. If you're calling locally, simply call 415-0631. If you're going to call um, long distance, put 473 before that, right? So really, the basic number, and it's, it's also my uh, WhatsApp, it's 415 -0631. We're starting to wind down, guys. Let me let me start with Mr. Mr. Norris here, Uncle Norris. You have a couple of minutes to put a wrap on things. Go ahead. All right. Well, I would say in my final comments that, as far as I'm aware, uh, the public in general is not against the CCJ. The public realizes that eventually all the CARICOM countries will probably have to accede to the CCJ. I think that that is an inevitability and that would come in due course. But the argument at present is with all the problems that we have at the local system where justice is denied why the rush to the CCJ? What, what is the magic for this December, November 6th deadline to go to the CCJ? That is my final comment. Right. What is there? Is there some ulterior motive? Okay, Corner, good morning. Go ahead. Yes, good morning, Citizen Grant. I'll be brief. It's a pretty long time I've made noises, but I wish to come in, Mr. Mitchell. Is it Norris? Yes, on this comment uh, made here this morning relative relative to why we should or not go to the CCJ. Yeah, yeah. Very, to Citizen Joseph, I want to say this. You are so ambiguous, Citizen Joseph, that I doubt that Grenada will go anywhere with you at that day. But here is Citizen Grant. I want to draw reference that I have always painted. Our major problem in this country is not the CCJ, and neither is that they want. They want the people sneakily through a cheap mouse trap to approve the Imperial Order and Council of the Queen's High Majesty with an added luxury to them that they do it their own way. That is why I urge my people, do not make the mistake. Do, my old grandfather used to tell me, yes, I can see him now blind as he was there. He used to tell me, watch boy, let me tell you something. You never give a blank check to a no one crook. And finally, citizen, your interview with a judge from Canada this morning said he uttered a couple of, couple of words that are very significant. Because it leads directly to the question I always ask, how can a country that is an, a colony of a monarchy, which its people age and, um, how you call them, subjects of a queen of said monarchy, can be at the same time a politically independent and sovereign nation state. He said the word this morning, no country can be independent and yet be a colony. Pay attention, Grenada, you're being misled by this clique of aristocrats. Protect yourself, I urge you into the future. Have a nice day with your citizens. Thank okay, you. Okay, I hear him clearly. Okay, uh, I hear. okay Willie, you, you want to say anything about what this gentleman had to say? Well, I didn't hear him. I couldn't hear him. No, okay. we, we're not hearing clearly. All right, yeah, we're, we're having some hassles. We are having some hassles, so I apologize for that. Okay. Um, uh, da -da, da -da. Let's see here. Okay. Good morning, Corey. I'm here. Good morning, Mr. Grant. I just want to find out the people going on to try to educate the people about the system. Yeah, I want to find out when they are making a trip to the Tempe, for the Tempe, Monconasas, Coconut Radio, and people are here all over, but I'm here, our um, community name, um, schedule yes, I would like them to let us know when they're coming in our area. I have some questions to ask. Okay. This lady wants the crack <laughs> to come into her community and answer some questions. Willie, you get to uh, throw your two cents in. I'm, I started with a lady. I'm going to wind up with a lady as well. So my two, two very quick an anecdotes. Do you remember when Eric Gary brought 
what was then called the Offshore Medical School in Grenada. Go ahead. We laughed and we ridiculed and we were apprehensive and so on. It was new to us. Offshore Medical School. What Gary with this thing? Today we have St. George's University. World renowned. World renowned. It came out of that genesis. Eh? Second anecdote. We grew up for a long time thinking that our professionals must be trained in Western universities. So when the revolution began to train fellas in Cuba and all these things, doctors, you remember what happened to the first set of grade and trained doctors from Cuba? Equivalency requirements and all sorts of nonsense. And who today constitutes the mainstay of the healthcare system? The very Cuban trained Grenadian doctors and Cubans themselves. So let us break this thing about fear of ourselves and all of that stuff and go forward bravely. All right, caller, good morning. You're on the air. Go ahead, caller. I want to ask Mr. Willie Joseph. All right, caller, good morning. What are the three? Hi, George. I want to ask Mr. Willie Joseph. What are the three levels of justice before you can get to the CCG? Because he said that the three levels of justice to get to the Privy Council are your local court, your high court, the OCS court, and then you may go to the, to the um, Privy Council. Is it any different if you want to get to the CCG? Thank you very much. Question was, what are the three levels you need to go through to get to the CCJ? Uh, well, the local court system. The magistrate's court, the high court, the OECS court of appeal, then the CCJ. The very same thing with the Privy Council. All right. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Hello. Good morning, caller. You are on the air. Hello. Goodbye, caller. Okay, folks, 415 please, please. Were you finished, Willie? Yes, yes, yes. I've put those on the table. Eh? St. George's, the medical school, now the renowned St. George's University. And when we started, we were, to a man, we laughed at Gary and this madness. Offshore medical school? What the hell is that? The Cuban trained doctors, Grenadians, because our professionals were to come from Western universities. So okay. let's, get it, let's get it right. All right. Caller, good morning. You are on the air. George. George, if there is, if there is no written transcript to the prisoner, how we matter could use the CCJ? This is what we are saying. You must put your quote in order here first. Because the, the, the prisoners cannot appeal because they have no written transcript. How are they going to reach in front of the CCJ? So this is why you must fix your system here first. Thank you. Okay, this goes back to the same story about fixing things. The point you were making, uh, Karina, get your house in order before you move to the CCJ, right? And Norris, you were saying? That's, that's, that's a slight little thing, too. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I was just telling William that um, the Cuban doctors that he's talking about, the Prime Minister just said that they're damn incompetent. <laughs> yeah. That's his comments recently. <laughs> so I'm just throwing that back to you. <laughs> it's still Sunday morning. <laughs> All right, Karina, I saved the best for you, girl. You're last, you're first, you're last. Uh, let's, hear, let's hear your version. Well, overall, I just think that eventually, well, change is inevitable, so eventually we might reach to embrace the CCJ, but I don't think... 2018 is the time. And this is just my opinion based on the research I did for the essay competition. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, it's, it's interesting. There are the three of you sitting here. I don't think there is anybody who is really against CCJ. I know, Willie, you're not. Um, I know, Kareen, you're not. 
No, you're not against the CCJ. No, no, that, that's what I said a while ago. All right. Eventually, no, it's, no, it's I think most CARCOM countries will accede to the CCJ. Eventually. Right. And I mean, you guys. What is the rush? All rush. You guys are just echoing sentiments all over the place. And Willie, don't ask me to tell you what I mean by all over. Um, okay, I think uh, we have somebody. I was just going to wrap it up, but I think we have somebody else on the line here. So let me try and get this person in. Good morning, caller. For him or anyone to receive water through the pipe system, pipe bone water, if the pipes are broken, and how does he compare his answer to the CCJ and access to justice? I didn't get a special question. I heard you guys. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, good morning. Good morning, Corey. You're on the air. Good morning, Joyce. Great program. And I want to make a point, and I'll try and brief, be as brief as possible. Generally, most people are in favor of the CCJ. Right. I am in favor of the CCJ, but I'll say not just yet. Because I, like a number of people, cannot be sure, we cannot be sure that justice to the satisfaction of all will be obtained. Okay, caller, thank you very much. I appreciate your call. Okay. So, Karina, were you finished with uh, your rap? Yes. Okay. First, thank you very much for, uh, for joining me this morning. I really, really, really do appreciate the time you've taken to be with us. Unfortunately, we have to pull the plug. And, uh, Think long and hard before you vote. Uh, Kipling Francis says here on Facebook, Willie, are you making... Really, are you... Really are making all good points, but the hidden agenda known only to himself. <laughs> Willie, somebody in New York by the name of Kipling Francis says, uh -huh. you're making good points, uh -huh. but with a hidden agenda known only to yourself hidden agenda yeah <laughs> well let me let me tell him what my slogan is with respect nnp but voting yes that's my slogan <laughs> anti let me see now let me let me contemplate that anti nnp but voting yes but voting yes that's my slogan i'll think there's about no that. hidden agenda okay mm. all right that's it. Um, let me take a little break here and we'll come back uh, and wrap it up right after this. So babe, Alberto and Beryl come and gone, right? So that means we still have Chris, Debbie, Florence, Michael, Patty, Sarah. From the looks of it, Tony and Valerie might be coming as well. So we need to pick up some extra hurricane supplies. You don't know how many hurricanes will be coming this season. So, you need to be prepared. At Hubbard's Hardware and Building Supply Department and the Food Fair Supermarkets, everything from canned foods, flashlight and batteries, to plywood, tarpaulin, lanterns, roof repair kits, water tanks, etc. are available. For over 90 years, we've helped you prepare for and recover from storms. Hubbard's is an integral part of your hurricane preparedness plan. Get discounts when using credit and debit cards. We have a date of history. The issue for the 6th of November is to vote on a bill. Could you enlighten the audience as to your motives for moving away from the JCPC? It is necessary to give citizens of Grenada the, uh, the right to appeal the outcome of general elections to the High Court, the Court of Appeals, and to the Caribbean Court of Justice. Do we give funds to the Privy Council? Dominica, do you swear allegiance to the Queen? The advisory committee really needs to take its role serious. Whatever we have to give to our polit political opponents, we will give. Vote yes, vote no. It's referenda on the CCJ in Grenada and Antigua. Join the discussion on Sunday, October 28th on Time to Face the Facts with host Jerry George, live at 8 p.m. on Caribvision and the Time to Face the Facts show Facebook page. Helen. Hey, neighbor. 
Here's the bill I asked you to pay for me. How did you get your electricity bill to be so low? For one, we size our transformers just for what we need. And we unplug transformers, chargers and other devices when they're not in use. We also replaced our light bulbs with LEDs. They burn less energy, right? Much less. I even replaced the seal on my refrigerator door to keep the cold air in. And Grenleck is always advising us not to open the fridge too often. That's right. And my family washes and irons in bulk. With fuel prices changing all the time, how do you know if it is working? We pay attention to the usage history table. Over time, our average usage has decreased. So while Grenada can't control fuel prices, I can conserve energy and save money. Grenelec, energizing our Grenada. Alrighty, folks, this is where we're going to pull the curtain down. But as always, one parting word from the Holy Scriptures. So hang in there for just a couple seconds longer. This is from the book of Job. Job chapter 24, verses 22, 23, and 24. But God, drab, God drags away the mighty by his power. Though they become established, they have no assurance of life. He may look the best in a feeling of security, but his eyes are on their ways. For a little while, they are exalted, and then they are gone. They are brought low and gathered up like all others. They are cut off like heads of grain. That reading, Job 24, verses 22. 23 and 24. Our George Apology is going to say thank you so much for keeping us company here this morning. I do hope that uh, you join me tomorrow morning for the next edition of Good Day Grenada. Weekday mornings from 9. And uh, of course on Thursday evening for Make We Chat with the usual suspects. I'll be back in the house as well. And uh, I mentioned to you earlier on this morning that we do hope, 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 say a prayer for me, that our internet issues will be resolved by Wednesday. We've been promised. And uh, boy, am I looking forward to that. It's been a tough time. George Grant, God's blessing. Go away. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 9.